Hello everyone, and welcome to the author's pen, my February video blog post for 2023. It's our second video blog post of the year, and I have a lot of fun doing these because it kind of helps to give us a little bit more of a personal connection. Before we get on with tonight's topic, let me remind everybody, uh, as you can see, our guest blog post uh, writer's family is growing. And if anybody would like to submit a topic for a guest blog post, uh, my email address is at the bottom. Uh, please shoot me an email, send me your draft in Word format. I'll review it and get back to you. Um, now let's talk about tonight's topic. Tonight's topic is the art of arguing. The question I pose to you is, is there an art to arguing? What do you think? I think there is. It's an ancient tradition. Uh, it's been happening for eons, long before you and I were here. But unfortunately, it's a habit based on personalities, and it's greatly flawed. And we're going to talk about that. And the reason I chose this topic is, uh, I guess tomorrow being Valentine's Day and happy Valentine's Day out there to everyone, um, I've been <laughs> receiving a lot of emails lately saying, uh, I'm arguing with my significant other, husband, spouse, family, whatever it might be, um, about a lot of things lately. And let's not, fake, let's, let's not kid ourselves. The, the way the world is today with all the pressures there are in the world today, um, Arguments between couples, families, uh, friends is on the rise. Political tension is high. I mean, come on. Uh, you all know what's going on in the world. So there's a thousand things in the world to argue about. The thing is, we need to understand something about arguing. First, it's anti-productive. Nobody wins. Okay? Think about any argument you've ever had. Was there really a winner or a loser? And if you won the argument, was the other person happy or did the other person just succumb because they just got sick and tired of arguing? Now, one particular email I received was uh, from a, a woman who's been married for quite some years. And uh, I guess she has a, according to her e email, history of arguing continuously with her husband about everything, the kids, finances, uh, just about everything, no matter what they do, where they go to dinner. It just always winds up in an argument, so they wind up not having a good time. And their marriage has reached a point where um, she doesn't even feel like it's a marriage anymore. She doesn't even feel like they're friends. And that's what arguing does. Arguing breaks up families, it breaks up friendships, and it could destroy relationships. So, the art of arguing... And I'm going to tell you the solution to that at the end. But the art of arguing is dependent on many factors. First of all, people's personality is the major factor. And what exactly is personality? Personality is the combination of characteristics or qualities that form an individual's distinctive character. And I'm going to add behavior to that. Personality also refers to the enduring characteristics and behavior that comprise a person's unique adjustment to life, including major traits, interests, drives, values, self-concept, abilities, and emotional patterns. So, when we're dealing with someone's personalities, we're dealing with what? Opinions. And the thing about opinions, opinions are like rear ends. Everybody's got one. And everybody thinks their opinion is right. Everybody thinks they're always right and the other person is wrong. Well, guess what? Wake up to the real world because that's not the case. Sometimes I don't care what your opinion is. You're just flatly wrong. All right. And opinions don't make you right. It just makes you want to express the way you, you, you view things. All right. But there's two critical failures. Actually, there's three critical failures to um, opinions or to people. One, they're opinionated, so they don't see things through the eyes of others. That's number one. They fail to discuss, meaning they don't give the other person time to talk, and they don't listen because everybody wants to get their word in. Everybody wants to get the last word. Therefore, 
They don't show each other any respect. And they don't understand that people have different opinions and people have the rights to those opinions. Now, let me tell you why I could talk about this subject. And a lot of you are in my age group that grew up in a different time, a time when you could understand the words to a a musical song, Uh, a time where if you smoked weed, grass, doobie, call it whatever you want to call it, you were just a hippie. If you did a tab of acid or other kind of drugs, you were a druggie. If you played sports, you were a jock. If you belonged to a fraternity or a, a group of people, you were a thug, you were a wise guy, you were a troublemaker. Well, you know, that's because people were opinionated. I grew up in a family that were experts at arguing. Now, I can only use the fact that I'm 100% Italian, but I'm sure this applies to many other cultures as well. But I grew up in a family where my mother had six sisters, two brothers. I only had one sister. And I grew up at a time where my grandparents lived on the two-bedroom first floor of a two-family house. We lived on the second floor of a two-bedroom, two-family home. My sister and I slept in the same bedroom until we were 14 years old, until my parents felt, well, it was time to move my sister downstairs to sleep in my grandparents' bedroom. Now, you want to talk about arguing? My mother, God rest her soul, was an expert at it. All right? And as much as I love her and I miss her dearly, the most opinionated woman you ever want to meet in your life, and she was always right. Talk about arguing. We argued all the time. I played sports in high school. I was in a high school fraternity. I was in a college fraternity. I was all those things that I described. All right, so my mother and I were constantly on the war path. My father just kind of sat back and just listened until the dust settled. Now, taking that one step further, coming from a large family, had a lot of cousins. The cousins never wanted to get involved with the aunts arguing, which was constant, holidays, whatever. Um, with six sisters and two brothers, all right, in an all Italian family, let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, they were experts on arguing. They were experts on not listening to one, one another, not showing each other respect, but yet they loved each other unconditionally. Go figure that one out. So, therefore, I became an expert in arguing. Come on, when we grow up, we, 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 we learn by association. We learn by what we see. And this is what I saw. This is what I grew up with. I've said this in some of my other posts. I remember when, before I got my driver's license and we would go down to the center of town and hang around at the, uh, down the center around the green, a bunch of us or whatever. And if all the sisters were over uh, Saturday night and they were playing cards, I mean, back then, you know, not every home had central air conditioning. We certainly didn't. Uh, and walking home at night, I could hear the arguing three blocks away because all the, the windows were open. So that was kind of a, a way of life, you know. Not to have an argument at a family holiday was like huh, completely unheard of. So you learn a lot about arguing. What you learn at the end of the day is it's anti-productive. And like I said, nobody wins. People just go away mad. Okay. They go away mad at one another. I remember my aunts not speaking to each other sometimes for weeks, even months. My mother didn't speak to one of her sisters for years up until the time her sister passed away. Now, how anti-productive is that? And this is what we've come to today. And our world has evolved even worse because there wasn't as many things to argue about when I was growing up as there is today. All right. Today, everything has a label. All right. Um, grew up in a different era of time. Now it's considered a different era of time. But everybody nowadays, which is okay, has an opinion. But we put a label on everything. You're either pro-choice, you're pro-life. Your sexual preferences. Uh, and again, we actually assign letters to it. It'll be LGBTQ. And before you know it, we're going to have every letter of the alphabet assigned to a specific trait or culture of people. How ridiculous is that? Why can't the world be basically simple? 
And it can be. All right? And I've said this a thousand times. And one of the quotes from my book, Making Partnership Choices, is life is not complicated. People make it complicated. And that's the truth. Because frankly, I don't care what anybody's preferences are as long as it's within the realms of of the law. However, live your life the way you want. Marry who you want. Practice whatever sexual preferences you choose with your partner, same sex or otherwise. Doesn't make a difference to me. You have that right as a human being, just as I have a right as a human being to live my life the way I choose. Now, where it becomes wrong is when people try to impress their morals, their values on other people. No one has the right to do that. So why can't people just follow the simple live and let live philosophy? All right? Why does everybody have to be up in each other's face, up in each other's business? All right? Who died and made that the most important thing in the world? All right? Nobody. Okay? So what happens is we have our opinion. Your significant other, a family member, a friend, whatever, may state their opinion about something. Your opinion is different. And the three critical failures come into play. A, you're opinionated. B, you don't discuss it, meaning... You don't listen to the other person, give them a chance to speak their opinion, and then you speak yours. You don't see, I should say, and you don't look at things through the eyes of the other person. That's probably the number one critical failure. All right? If people took the time to just listen to what someone has to say and look at it through their eyes, They might see it differently. That doesn't mean you're going to agree with it. You still may not agree with it. But the fact is, you'll be able to understand it. And when you understand the subject matter you're talking about, you won't argue about it. You'll discuss it. And at the end of the discussion, you may have to agree to disagree. Now, I'm not going to say for one minute that you're never going to have an argument. Let me tell you, in my younger years, I'll argue with anyone. And I was very, very opinionated. But I learned over time, after all my years of being a career firefighter, and all my years as being a paramedic, and writing books, and doing public speaking, and so on and so forth, that arguments don't work. They fail. They make everything around them fail. That's a fact of life. You don't have to like it. It's just the way it is. Now, you can either fall into that trap and have that faction of your life fail, which could be very costly, both emotionally, mentally, as well as financially, or you can make that faction of your life succeed. All right? So what is the art of arguing? So the art of arguing is not how to properly argue. That's not it at all. And if that's what you think the art of arguing is, you might be beyond help, to be quite honest with you. The art of arguing is to understand that not having one is the key. Not having having an argument, have a constructive discussion. And it took me years to overcome my own habits. Come on, that's what I grew up in. That's what I knew. All right? Have a discussion, not an argument. Listen to the other person. And I know this is repetitive and I'm saying it many times because that's the take-home message. Listen to your partner, your friend, your family member. Give them time to state their case, state their opinion. Look at it through their eyes and see, does that make sense to you? Does this make sense to me? And then take what makes sense about it, 
adjust maybe your opinion if that's what you need to do and then state yours and somewhere trust me when I tell you all right because it took me years to learn this that you will each and every time come to a happy medium compromise whatever you want and your life's going to be a lot simpler okay so I say there's the three D's to avoiding an argument. And the three D's are discuss, discuss, and discuss. Does that make sense? Does any of this make sense to you? Put this in context with your own life. Think about the last argument you had with someone. Am I saying anything to you that's wrong? I mean, we see this crap on the news every day of the week. We see it in politics. We see it in social development. We see it in protest groups. We see it in almost everything on the news. Nobody listens to the other side. Everybody thinks they are right. Well, you know what? If everybody in the world is right, nobody's ever going to be wrong, and we shouldn't be having these problems. But yet we do. It's like the world, countries. Everybody wants more. They're not happy with what they have. Take Russia and Ukraine for an example. Why does Russia give a damn about Ukraine? Leave the damn people alone. Worry about your own country. Same thing with China and Taiwan. That little island's going to make a big difference to you? Leave them alone. What do you care? Worry about China. The problem with the world today is people are too worried about everyone else instead of focusing on themselves. Mind your own business, focus on yourself, let people live the way they want to live and leave them the hell alone. That's what it boils down to. Now, what happens from there is we have morality and values that come into play. Especially when we talk to pro-life versus pro-choice. Now, I'm not going to give you my opinions on some of these things because I certainly have my own. And a lot of our opinions are based on our religious beliefs. Uh, They're based on our upbringing. Um, And you know what? 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 50 years from now, times are going to change and opinions are going to change. And things are going to be different then. So when you look at it in that context, and if you think back, let's say you're in your 60s or your 70s, think back 50 years when you were in your teens. Did you ever think you would see what's going on in the world today? No, you didn't. You didn't anticipate it. You can't anticipate it because you can't anticipate evolution and how times change and technology changes. You talk about the government. They have to have their hand in everything. Now they're telling people, gas stoves. You have to have, get rid of your gas stoves and go all electric. My God, if this whole country and this went totally electric, we'd have no lights. All right? The bottom line is, these are maybe great climate aspirations, for many, many years and probably decades down the road when things are ready for it. But we're not ready for it now. Doesn't mean we can't work towards it. But the government is wrong when they try and dictate to people things of that nature. Okay? We hear it on the news all the time. The cheapest electric car is $60,000. The average mean household income across the country can't afford that. And not everybody wins like they did a couple of weeks ago, the billion dollar um, mega million lottery. Okay, so it's fine to plan for things. It's fine to say we need to be moving in this direction. But it is not fine to tell people 
that you have to do it and you have to do it by a certain time or whatever the case may be because everybody's life situation is different. That becomes an opinionated opinion. It's thinking they're right and everybody else is wrong. You're trying to force things down people's throat and what are you going to cause? Yeah, you're going to cause that argument. And now you have people especially in today's times, against the government, when it should be the government for the people and the people supporting the government. Now, I don't want to make this politics because we all have our opinions on politics and left and right and who may be right and who may be wrong, what your preferences are, what my preferences are, but we're talking about the basic concepts of what causes arguments. All right. So I hope you got something out of this post um, or at least it caused you to think and maybe take a look at your own life. And if you're falling prey to some of these things, well, then maybe you'll change it or maybe you won't. And you'll go on to continue to argue and you'll go to work aggravated. You'll be driving home and not want to come home. Or you won't want to deal with certain family members at a ho- or at a holiday or you won't be talking to certain friends, which is absolutely ridiculous. And in the end, it's all anti-productive. Now, the one thing you learn in medicine, and being a paramedic, you have to obviously do two years of medical studies, and not to count your continuing medical education for every year you uh, maintain your paramedic license, you learn that the root cause of most diseases begins with stress. And what do people cause in this lifetime for themselves? Stress. And stress is one of the things that we have the most control of. All right, if you're under a lot of stress because you made a ton of bills, who made the bills? Now, some bills you make, obviously, may be completely unforeseen. You need a new roof. You're not prepared for it. Your air conditioner just broke. Whatever the case may be. Things do happen. But there's a lot of things when it deals with stress that you have control of. Your outlook when you go to work. Your outlook when you when you deal with people. Okay? So try to reduce the stress in your life. And one of the ways to really great, greatly reduce the high degree of stress you have in your life is not to argue. And as I said earlier, that is the art of of the argument people that is the art of arguing and that is not having one so with that thank you all for tuning in i hope you enjoyed this hope you got something out of it and i always say live with an open mind live with an open heart and live your best life god bless stay well and look forward to speaking to you in march good night